Hello, John. Hello, Oliver. And so I paid a visit to County, or sorry, sorry, down to Kinmare. Yeah. Okay. And, County uh, Kerry. In, in County Mare, sorry, County, County Kerry, yes. And uh, it was absolutely fantastic little town. Okay. It is. And afterwards, it on the Ring of Kerry. But we stopped off in a place called McCarty's. McCarty's is a bar or restaurant, and uh, it was established in 1913. Okay. Is that in, in Kenmare? That's in Kenmare, in Kenmare Town. Yeah. And it was very, very good. And I met an elderly lady in there. Her name was Noreen Sullivan. And Noreen yes. was sitting beside me. Uh, and I was facing her. And my partner was facing me, you see. Okay. So then what caught me about her was her eyes. She These striking eyes. Okay. And I thought she looked like Elizabeth Taylor. Good. So I, I introduced myself. And I said... Um, you, you you look like I think you're the only woman in Kerry that I've ever met that has glamour. Good. <laughs> okay. Nice compliment. Nice compliment. And she was very shy and very very. She just took the compliment very well. And then she says, "Well, do you know, you're the second person to say it to me." She says, "A long long time ago, someone said that same thing to me." And I says, "Yeah, you've striking eyes. You know, you've you're very glamorous looking. You know." But she told us some lovely stories about the, the town anyway, you know, and Good. afterwards we went for a walk around the place. We came across some activists um, giving out a leaflet, uh, which we'll be talking about in another video. You can hold up the yeah. leaflet there. And That's show right, it, yeah. Know. The War on Food and Farmers. Uh, it's a very good, informative leaflet. It is. It's, yeah. it's very, very good. And thanks be to God for Kenmare in the country. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. get this uh, information. And we were walking around the and we came across a lovely little sweet shop. Um, and then we came across, we went into a restaurant and we seen there was an artist there. Um, and she was showing off her art. Um, a fantastic artist. She has about, I'd say, five different paintings inside in the shop. Um, it's a restaurant, was it? It was a restaurant, yeah, a restaurant. And uh, well, she displayed them there and hoping maybe to sell them. Yeah, absolutely. And it works because the first thing I noticed when I went in there was not the food. I noticed, <laughs> I noticed the art. Okay, Good. and her art is very, very. What I love about her art is all, all the entire picture is broken up into borders. So even the cat has a border painted around him. Okay, yes. each figure. That's her style, her unique style of art, and I haven't actually seen it in an artist before where she actually insists upon putting a bright yellow line around, say, the black cat. Lovely. Or a, or a blue line around the yellow jug. It's actually very unique. I haven't seen it, you know, and I thought no, it was... No, uh, well, of course, yes. And uh, well, there's the talent that you come across in Ken Mayer, which yeah. I was in that town and stayed in it. Yeah. And uh, Kilgarvan, on the way to Ken Mayer, I was in that town and did business yeah. with one of the... Uh, Michael Healy Ray in the May supermarket there years ago before he was before when his father was the TD now he's a TD and his brother is, is as well uh, I think Paddy uh, uh, Paddy Healy Ray so um, I know that neck of the woods pretty well and I had customers in Kenmare also and uh, it was a town that I liked very much. As a matter of fact, I visited the church there, which is a lovely church at the end of the town, and said the stations at the cross in it when I was uh, working for myself. I kind of did them type of things. I wasn't always uh, rushing here, there and yonder, and covered a bit of ground. But I certainly liked Ken Mayer. Now, you mentioned that, that lady that you, that you met and your girlfriend, and you were, was that in the old pub established in 1913? It was. That was McCarty. P. F. McCarty's. Aye, I've done a painting with for Kenmare because it was a town that I'm very fond of. Oh, you did. I've, I have. I have a painting of Kenmare. Oh, did. Say, did you do the painting yourself, or uh, I did the painting myself. Yeah, it was. Um, I, 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 I had a. A picture, or um, I must have taken a picture, or else I had a postcard, whatever it was. No, I think I had a picture. And um, so I did this of, of Canberra and the sort of, and I put some of the signs up, and I think it would be a person who would know Canberra would know that that's Canberra. Because um, the way the streets were and the buildings, I found the, building, the bu bu buildings very interesting. There's an assortment of buildings and family stores, and that's what I like in a town. Absolutely. There's and family they're... stores, and now there's this marvellous artist. So there's more talent in towns in this country than we realise. Absolutely. And then uh, we went into, I think it was called, another restaurant called the Brew, Brew, Brew Restaurant, I think it was called. Um, there's two restaurants. Yeah, but there was two restaurants, yeah, that we, we were into for the, for the time we were there. But the Brew Restaurant was kind of, um, it was a mixture of a bar and a restaurant. 
and I came across a leaflet where there was a man giving a lecture. Uh, if I was around long enough, I would have went to see it. He was giving a lecture on the music, how the music styles have changed, and he was going to be showing it in the old Carnegie Library. And he was giving a lecture, basically, a workshop over six weeks, showing how music styles have changed since the 1950s. It would have been very interesting. It would, it would, it would. I See, there's more going on in these towns. Uh, uh, in some ways, living in a city, you're, you're missing all this. Uh, there's, there's supposed to be uh, um, theatres and, and uh, places for music, like in, in a national concert hall in, in uh, Ernstwood Terrace, which is, I visited, and, uh, which is very good. But you have as much talent in the country, funny enough. And you mentioned the Carnegie Library. It was a library, a, a, and there was a music hall. That's right, it's a theatre. Well, you see, look at, all the, look at all the amenities that they have in that town. As you know what was nice about that? We're, we're going to do a video about Carnegie um, himself um, at, a, at a later stage. But what was nice was they kept the name Carnegie. When it, it, cha- it changed from being a library to a theatre. It's lovely to see it. Yeah. And this is a man that was of Scottish um, descent and uh, become a very wealthy m- m- millionaire at the time in the, 19, in the in middle 1800s and thereabouts up to the 1920s or 30s. And he built a lot of stuff. And uh, it's marvellous to think that in Kenmare, they found a way down there. So it meant that the people there must have been very, very artistic and made 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 uh, inquiries to get the Carnegie Library there. And they got it yeah. because they were obviously dedicated. So it just shows you what's going on in towns. And I have to have sort of admire Kerry in many ways because they seem to be more mm, in tune with what, uh, people need it and this is why they produced the, the like of the famous liberator Daniel O'Connell and, and the famous uh, uh, Pimper Gla- uh, Vatican Pimpernel uh, Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty uh, the great man that saved thousands of Jewish people and pris- and, and uh, escaped prisoners uh, during the Nazi era in, in Italy uh, the German invasion of that country and uh, uh, the rest of it even though uh, the um, <clears throat> Uh, the Mussolini and those, uh, whatever they were called, uh, had associated with with Hitler, but the, the Italians themselves were more interested in saving people. And Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty, another carry man, so there must be something in the air there that has this creed of tendency. Absolutely. And Kilmer has it. <clears throat> and we headed out then out the road, we decided we'd head yonder, and we came across Dromore Castle. So Dromore Castle um, has a magnificent side entrance, um, and it's basically for bringing all of the produce in to be shipped off on the ships because you're right beside the sea. Um, and so it was absolutely an absolute magnificent side entrance. But at that point, I thought, you know, let's find out how many castles is in Ireland. OK, yes. And I was shocked to discover there's actually between ruins and functioning castles in Ireland. There's 3,000 castles in Ireland. Amazing. Nobody would t- think that. You asked me that earlier, and I reckon there might be 200, maybe 300. But be goodness, 3,000. So you can see why the Vikings would have invaded Ireland, you know, why they came here. Because Ireland was yeah. actually in the past a very wealthy country. If you go back to the time, go back a couple of hundred years ago, it was always uh, wealthy. I, I, exactly. Before probably the penal times and uh, the invasion from the, from the British and, and uh, for their own agenda, uh, the Irish people were very capable of, of making the country prosperous and, and had ships, by the way, as well, mm. uh, that, that uh, sailed the seven seas. And uh, there's a little story we had about some gentleman in Wicklow that's, that's uh, building on walls, uh, uh, seafaring ships. And so that's another story we'll be doing uh, sometime about, about that uh, gentleman. And uh, so there, there is all this talent okay. in, in towns and the Lake of Kinmare. Uh, you must have been probably surprised when you saw all what you saw. I was, and the thing about Kenmare is it's a very clean town, it has a great atmosphere, um, you can get a kind of an artistic vibe there, but anyway, beside the castle, okay, beside Dromore Castle, I was disappointed. What's the name of the castle? Dromore. Is it, is it, is it occupied? It is, uh, this is a functioning castle, it's privately oh, owned now, I was talking is to... It, is, it, is it in Kenmare, where, where is it? Think, uh, just out on the outskirts of Kenmare, on the oh, lovely. back roads. Uh, does, does, um... Is there, a, is there a big hotel outside Kinmare? 
Oh, Opposite know. by the Brennans. Uh, now, he, maybe it didn't come across it, but I know, I think it's down there. I don't know whether I come across it, uh, because he was often on the on the television uh, with regard to this great hotel that they have down there, and they get an international trade. So there's great talent down there, okay. as far as I'm concerned. So I'm delighted to hear it, and we'll, we'll be doing more about... Uh, Kenmare and, 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 and the country, the, uh, what, what you f- found when you were on a bit of a tour there recently. Just, just I know you, you, you like your Holy Wells and you were talking about the, um, the importance of Holy Wells for tourism. But beside the castle, there's a wall. And unfortunately, Quilta, the, the forest crowd, have blocked it off. They're, they're, after, they're cutting the forest down there and they put a barrier there so, so people couldn't go down to the Holy Well. But beside Dromore Castle, anyway, there's a, there is a Holy Well. Well, there you are, yeah. you see. So so obviously they had a, a Catholic and a Christian outlook yeah. uh, because Holy Wells were places. Uh, for example, I wonder how many Holy Wells in the country. I think there's a whole Holy Well in every uh, town and village in the country. There probably is, yeah. Uh... And Mars Rocks, we don't have many Mars Rocks because that's where Mars was celebrated for hundreds of years in all weathers mm-hmm. uh, because churches were destroyed. Yeah. And mon- mon- monasteries. How many monasteries is in the country, I wonder? Well, there's about 550. Oh, big goodness. That yeah, many? There's that many, uh, yeah. Ah, well, you see, they, they were a great force for good yeah. uh, for the neighbourhood. They were uh, they, they, they had great agricultural... They developed the agricultural husbandry that's, uh, that kind of others copied. And they also... People got employment and they got food and everything in these monasteries. Yeah. But they were destroyed by the by the by the British particularly, and then raided, of course, by the, the Vikings. And I think they wanted to kind of uh, conserve some part of Dublin to the Vikings. I wasn't too interested in that to do with Vikings. There was there was there was uh, murderers and 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 robbers. Yeah, but I was always wondering, you know, why did they come to Ireland? Well, you can see now, if you've got 550 monasteries, and if you've got 3,000 castles, yeah, there's obviously a lot of gold. <laughs> that's right, but they wouldn't have happened in their country, because it's a flat old country, and uh, you, you, you'd get dizzy walking around with all these wells, or these um, canals, and all the rest of it. Sure, the highest mountain is only 310 feet or something in that country, so uh, you wouldn't have any vistas like we have in this country. You, you go up, I often stop the the car over the years I come on a scene and I'd just stop and I'd admire the beauty and the and the, and the sort of tranquility and, and the cows grazing in the field and all the rest of it yeah. nature look you couldn't what a green no wonder it's called the emerald oil named after uh, the, the emerald Diamond, absolutely. Because that's why, because it has such such beauty with the mountains and and, and the lakes and the rivers. We live in a fine country, John Malone. We do one of the best in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oliver.